Hello fellow Haskellers, so we're going to initiate like a new test, a new experiment, and we're going to call it Bug Hunting with Haskell. So we want to talk about this article that Michael Snowman posted some weeks ago, Haskell the Bad Parts, where he generally runs about um, some Haskell general stuff, and it's quite interesting, I re truly recommend you to, uh, to give it a look. And here we have a meme, other languages, what if functions throw ex exceptions? Um, have you heard of partial functions? <laughs> yes, I think it's a good meme. Haskell, hold my beer. Everything is possible. Well, the point is that he arrives at some point in which he explains partial functions. And of course, he talks about mm, head and tail and some things that historically we all know that are partial functions in Haskell. But then he arrives to decode UTF-8. And decode UTF-8 um, is taken to parse a byte string and return text. But the thing that nobody, or at least not a big number of people knows, is that decode UTF-8 can actually crash, which is interesting. And here is a, it says, Go ahead, search your code base. Be dismayed that you found it present. And he generally recommends, recommends to use the safer version, decode UTF-8. So what we're going to do now is to go together to the new Haskell application, to the new Haskell code base of 47 degrees, and we're going to look for usages of decode UTF-8. And as you can see, we are using it in four different places. And we're going to fix that together, basically. So yes, we were using um, the code UTF-8 and we were using it in our new GraphQL server, which is something quite dangerous. Uh, it could have blown up if it received like a weird uh, UTF-8 character. So we're going to replace it right away using multi-cursor with the safest version, which is the uh, UTF, decode UTF-8 prime. And now we see that actually everything breaks. Why? Because as it mentions now, since this is the safest version, now it no longer succeeds. It just, it just re returns an either. It signals in the data type that it can blow up. And now we need to deal with the four different occurrences. This got imported by us, for us. And now we need to tackle each individual thing step by step. And what we're going to do is, um, in case it bl blows up, we're going to terminate with our IO of response received. And if you are paying attention, we have a to error function, which returns a properly formatted GraphQL error message, which we want to use. But now, if you notice, the text of our exception, uh, it's inside the Unicode exception. So we're going to have to unpack that. So what we're going to do is to decode error, define a new function, and say that we're going to receive this and return our IO of response receipt. And then implement this function. And now we get the complaint that we are not importing this, so we can do this very safely. And we're going to go ahead and where it was added, um, at the end, we're going to also import the constructors. We save and stylish Haskell replaces the input and puts it in it on its place. Great. So now we can go ahead and implement this function. And if you have a look at this type, we can open the documentation and we see that Unicode exception has two constructors, decode error and encode error. And one of them is actually deprecated. So we're not going to use them. So we want to now close this and pattern match on that constructor. And we're going to have the message here. And now we should call to error and pass this message. Should have two arguments. We don't need the second one. And now it complains that we are passing string and we need a uh, text. 
So what we're going to do is to use a very nice feature of Haskell, which is called view patterns. And we apply this function before. And we add the extension view patterns. And we save, format, great. And what, what this does is basically to apply, uh, let us apply functions in our pattern matching so that we don't have to do it here. Great, now this is complaining that we haven't handled all the cases, and in the case this is uh, any other constructor, we can safely throw an error and say um, encode error is deprecated. Awesome, and now we can go ahead and use this function. So we're going to handle the first time we, we see this, we're going to do it here and say case decode error of this, and if we receive uh, a left of a message, and if we receive a right of a message, we're going to do something. And here we actually want to say to error, could not decode the string here. Great. Okay, so now in the case we were able to parse our query, We are going to call it here and say query. And in the case it blow up, we're going to say to decode error and pass message here. Now our decode UTF-8 can blow up and we need to pattern match on it. And if it's left, we're going to call this the code error that we just um, used defined down. And if it's a right and we have the message, we're going to execute query. Nice, so one down, three to go. Beautiful, so now here in this left, in any case, we have an error. So now we are decoding and in the case it's a Unicode exception, we want to use our custom error. And in case it's a regular thing, we can just use the two error functions. We were able to parse it. So now we can, since this returns neither, we can say, use the either function and say, if it's a left, we're going to call to error. And if it's a right, we're going to decode error. And I think this is the other way around. Perfect. So now if decode throws and it gives us an unicode and unicode exception, we're going to call to decode error. And if it was able to pass the error messages, we're going to use our regular to error function. Great. So now we fix two cases out of four. And now let's see what happens. Well, first of all, we're going to try to extract this because it looks a little ugly. We're going to call this query, like a really random name, query. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to call this maybe query here and here. Okay, so now what we want is this. We want this maybe query. We have a maybe of a maybe, so now we want to fmap it here to have it more flat. Great. Maybe of an either. And here what we can say is for the operation name that instead of a maybe of an either, we're going to want and either of a maybe. Perfect. 
And now we can say here in maybe query that we have maybe of either. So in this case, we received a write. We got the query. Here the same. So the query is handled now correctly, but we need an operation name. So the operation name, we are going to pattern match again by it, the operation name. And this time we're going to say that if the operation name was a Unicode error, we are going to call the code error. Right away, short circuiting all the rest of the things. So if we couldn't parse the operation name of GraphQL, we're going to throw, so to speak, and tell the user that we couldn't parse it. And in the happy path, now we just add that we have a right of, of an operation name. Use it here. And here the same. Right of an operation name and operation name. Okay, and we need to skip one thing more here. And now it works. Great, so it seems that we handled all the cases. Now the Visual Studio Code is not complaining anymore. So now let's compile and check if our code still works. Beautiful. So the code is now starting, it's creating all the tables and our GraphQL server is being executed on port 8000, which means that our application still works. We safely refactor our code and now we prevented from our application from exploding in case there was a decode UTF-8 error. We will maybe create more or start a series in 47 degrees. And by the way, if you want to learn Haskell, we have in 47 Degrees Academies, very interesting Haskell courses, so make sure to check them out. <laughs>